Let's get to Venezuela. It has indeed backed down on its demand that American diplomats leave the country. The Venezuelans say they are open to talks. Meanwhile, Maduro is demanding that the military be loyal to him because an attaché defected. He turned around and said, I want a pledge of loyalty from you guys, and he got it. Joining us now, Wall Street Journal columnist Mary Anastasia O'Grady, who's been on top of this for many, many years, actually. Look, I, I think, to some degree, this is a standoff between Russia and America. The Russians have got $10 billion invested in Venezuela and some military assets too. They don't want to lose that. They're going to back Maduro. Well, I think, you know, you raise a good point, but I think it's a little bit more complicated than that because okay. don't forget China also has a, a, a lot of... They've got $65 billion of, there. And they're owed a lot of... They're, they're being repaid through the oil that's coming out of the ground, which is... You know, they're bringing less and less oil up. But I think what's going to happen here and what we have to keep our eye on, we've, we're, we're stuck in the fog of war right now. But we should pay attention to the fact that there's a lot of violence developing that's not being reported. This violence is between the National Guard and uh, groups of people in slums in very poor neighborhoods that have traditionally, for all these years, been supporters of Hugo Chavez and later of this regime. These groups are clashing. Why? Because these very poor people can't get food, can't get water, can't get electricity, can't get jobs. I mean, they're literally desperate. And so they are fighting these armed forces. Now, um, you know, I think the, the news that we saw over the weekend that Russia is bringing paramilitary we don't know how many into the country, as we've talked about a lot before. Cuba has a lot of interest in hanging on to this piece of real estate on the South American continent. So they're going to be there in big force. The question to me is, will the fact that 30 million Venezuelans want this guy gone, want new elections, will that be enough to basically, you know, forestall any survival of Maduro. And I want to raise one other thing, which I broke this news in my column this morning, which is that the U.S. has officially said to Guaido, the interim president, you now control all of the assets at the New York Federal Reserve that belong to Venezuela and any of the assets in U.S. in U.S. banks that are guaranteed by the U.S. government. Oh. The Bank of England on Friday refused to... Uh, Maduro tried to draw on $1.2 billion of gold reserves. The Bank of England said no. Oh. So the, the, strategy, the, the strategy among the civilized countries is basically financial right now. And I think that's good for now because I... I worry about getting, you know, sucked into a quagmire there's, there. There's no going back. There's no going back. I don't to think a, the people of Venezuela will go back overall. because, you know, they don't like Maduro. They haven't liked him for a long time. Chavez so had kind of like this halo, but he doesn't have that. It's just a question of how do you get this guy out? Do you get him out by denying any money at all? and diplomatic recognition. That's one of the things that we really need, but, but, but I think we need to be also prepared that it could get very ugly on the ground yep. because I do think Cuba and Russia will use paramilitary and the National Guard and anybody they have so left to what, basically hand-to-hand -hand combat. What will we do then? You know? I've, I'm sorry to very rush tough. you like this, yeah. uh, but I'm out of time. Thank you, Stuart. You're right on top of it. Thank you. Come back and see us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.